So in 531, 102D, guys, this is catching a lot of people and or people are skipping it. You're going to get a check minus if you skip problems. If you don't know how to do it, we can do it together, right? So like skipping a problem is not the solution. John? what I thought, but you guys told me I was crazy. Which, I mean, that's not far-fetched, right? I mean, a lot of times I am crazy. Don't know what's going on. Guys, Matt, I explained this to my morning class, my, like, war. Math never changes, so that's where, like, I will never change my schedule. Um, so I don't necessarily know what's going on when there's a schedule change. No. Maybe, but I, so I'm starting to have issues with people turning in homework they obviously didn't check. Because your homework should not have wrong answers on it when we check it together and you have the opportunity to go back and fix things. So 531, either you just got it back or you haven't turned it in yet. I wanted to talk real quick about starting problem D. So this is on 531, not 532 yet, 531. Because I graded a bunch of yours and I realized this was a common issue. Inside of these left parentheses, there is both addition and multiplication. So what would happen first inside these parentheses, Eli? The multiplication. So this set of parentheses is going to become 2 plus negative 15 on the inside of that parentheses. And the second set also has addition and multiplication. So again, like Eli just said, the multiplication happens first. Then we can do the addition over here and the addition over here. I forgot to close that parentheses. So I get negative 13 and negative, anyone help me out here? 3 plus negative 12, nine. negative 9. This is what your work should look like, and then you get to your final answer. What's a negative times a negative going to do? Make a positive. Please do not skip problems you don't know how to do, and do not just write down answers. I am a broken record. I am repeating myself every day, but people are still doing the same thing. It is becoming ever more frustrating. Vincent. Yeah, if you've got highlighters, you could color code those, which actually we're probably going to use highlighters today. So if you want to go ahead and pull one or two highlighters out, that would be convenient. All right, so now 532. Guys, I'm telling you, do not just write down answers. Ask me questions if any of this doesn't make sense. I'm trying to zoom in a bit more for my visually impaired friends, just like me. So ask away, what questions do we have about 532? I need to update the dry erase board here with the assignments. I apologize. That's my bad. Nope, nope, nope. I had it. I swear I had my copy up here, but now I can't find it, so I'm going to have to grab another copy. Or I'll just do it on the whiteboard. Eve? Uh, um, oh, here's my copy. Which one? Sorry. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing right now. I'll organize in a minute. All right. 111. So this gives us our percent bar like that we were working with horizontally, but it gives it to us vertically. Has anyone ever seen one of those like fundraiser things where it looks like a thermometer and they're trying to get to their goal? That's like what this situation is doing. A local theater is raising ticket prices by 20%, but so this, we're not necessarily going to use all of this. So I <clears throat> oh, never mind. Sorry, I had to recenter myself on the question. My bad. This is why you got to read the question first. 
Assuming the current youth ticket price is seven fifty, use the diagram at the right and find out how much more youth tickets will cost. So they tell us one hundred percent is seven fifty. How could I figure out what the twenty percent is if I know what one hundred percent is? You guys both wrote. Can you say it at the same time? Well, what do you want me to do? Well, we could, or how can I get from 100 to 20? We could divide by 5, right? And then we can do it in just one step. So if we divide by 5, a dollar 50? A dollar 50? So 20% would be a dollar 50, which means that will add to that original price. So what's the new price going to be? Nine bucks. A little expensive, but you gotta support the theater. That's no more expensive than what like a movie ticket would be, probably. All right, answers back up here. So that's how they got nine dollars and a dollar fifty. Other questions, Eli? What? So you're talking yeah. about one ten? Yeah. So I couldn't tell what you were referencing. Ah. Guys, please look at 110. 110 is the type of problems we still haven't done much with. If we're trying to get a result and then another result right after it, it actually gets tougher. It gets harder to get that result. So what's my chance of getting black on the first spin? One third. But then I want to get it again. So then I have to say times another one third. That's how we get one ninth. Same with green twice. My first chance of getting green is one third. And then because I want another green right after it, I multiply them. Mia. What? Did I? Uh, did I rewrite it? Yeah. Oh, because I wanted to try to make it easier. I'm just grabbing another copy of this. I don't know where my copy went. I probably gave it away to somebody. Yeah, guys, so I tried to make it easier for you by having you draw a table to help you out with this. The questions they ask are the same that I ask, except like that's the first question I ask, but then I asked a different second question. So if I turned this into a table, probably be purple, green, black, purple, green, black. So, uh, guys, I will, I will tell you, this is why you can't copy answers. I start to mess with the homework a little bit as we get deeper into the year. My questions are not identical to the book, so catch me when we're looking at the answer key and it doesn't seem to make sense. What's the probability of spin one matching spin two? Well, that's this box and this box and this box. So what would that be? Nice. Three out of nine. But what is the chance of black, black, or green, green, or purple, purple, like individually, it'd be one out of the nine. But then the chance of spin two not matching spin one, well, that would be any of the other boxes, right? Because these are our only matching spins. So spin two not matching, one, two, three, four, five, six out of nine. If you don't have a table, you're going to get a check minus. What other questions? We did this one. There was another hand up. Mia? Ah, thank you so much. I'm pretty sure I put on your... Because you already turned this in last night, but I wanted to chat with you about this. Find this by combining like terms and making zeros. How do we make zeros? A positive and a negative. Sorry, thank you to those that rose your hand, but we got to move a little quick. So that's a zero. That's a zero. 
That's a zero. The empty boxes, are those positives or negatives? Negatives. So we have a negative x and a negative 1. I'm not going to do part B for you, but that is what we're doing. You circle up opposites to make zeros, and then write what you have left. What would we do first here in 112A? And guys, if you don't have work on these problems, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get a check minus. If you don't have work on these problems, I don't care if you're going to tell me I did it in my head. I don't care. Sorry. There's like, we're not trying to do it in our head here. We're trying to do it on paper because the math you're going to be asked to do very soon is way too complicated to do in your head. We do it on the paper. What would we do first here? Well, order of operations. Guys, and a couple of you have come to work with me, and I really appreciate that because you've told me you didn't learn about exponents last year, like which is a big deal. Exponents are these little numbers right here. So parentheses will happen first. 2 plus 3. But then the E stands for exponents, which is also known as powers, but we didn't want to use P twice. Well, be careful. So this is five to the second power or five with the exponent of two. What that means is take the number and multiply it as many times as the little number tells us. So what is five times five? 25. So this becomes six plus 4 times 25 now. Do not add first. We got to multiply before we add. What's 4 times 25? 100. So I believe our answer key should show 106. Ha-bam. Mia. Yeah, thank you for asking that. Guys, if there's one thing I can tell you about where, like, the rest of the year, it's ask questions. I want to teach my lessons, but it's pointless if you don't understand the practice. Ask questions. So two with the little three, that means, and guys, you might want to write this over here on your paper, it means 2 times 2 times 2. What's 2 times 2 times 2? Because the 3 tells us there are 3 of them there. So that's 8. So this will become 6 plus 4 times 8 plus 3. Also, your calculator is stupid. And unless you type it in exactly right, your calculator can make a mistake. Do not just try to put this whole thing in a calculator and have it do it all at once. you got to take it piece by piece. Trust me, your calculator's kind of stupid. I mean, you would continue doing this work, right? So we got to do the multiplication next, then we'll be able to add. But the answer key tells us 41. Guys, most of the people at Math Lunch are doing, like, the current homework. If you find yourself not getting the current homework done, come to Math Lunch. We eat and just do homework and, like, listen to music. Farah? Um, yeah, that was probably just a, a math mistake. Like, a, like, not that you did something critically wrong. You just, like, probably added something wrong. Oh, yeah. So 6 plus 4... 10, 2 plus 3, 5, what did the answer key say? 50. 50? Yeah, because I think it should come out to be 50. Yeah. So this is the whole point of checking answers. Exactly what I think I just heard Farah say. I realize what I did wrong. That's like gold, guys. That like recharges my internal battery. So this would come out to be 50. Any last questions? We got to move. 
Like, I will take more questions, but you got to ask them. Eve, I can't tell if that's a hand or not. Then you got to actually, like, put some effort in. Lift your head, get your hand actually in the air. What question? One fourteen part B. Exactly what they tell us here it should make sense when we look at the picture. And if it doesn't, that would be a come talk to me, because area is space inside. So this shape is named R X squared. This shape is a one, and this shape is an X. In the right order, we would say X squared plus X plus one. But it's okay if you have it in a different order. And then we don't know the label, so it'd be units squared. Vincent? Oh, dang, thank you. You definitely get candy at the end of class. Uh, let's pause this. As things that should not be in your binder. The probability mastery, if your revisions are done on it, because we went over it yesterday, that needs turned in. It's not in MAP yet. If you're using MAP as your plan book, that's a bad idea. These two assignments are in MAP. 531 is not in MAP yet, and 532 is due tomorrow, so all those things will need turned in, and this is just the same reminder that was there yesterday. All right, so pull out this uh, worksheet that you picked up from up front, and really you don't need much else aside from this worksheet out, maybe pencil, maybe highlighter. So guys, the 5D process, if you talk to anybody from my afternoon class, they might tell you that I talked about it being silly, and it kind of is, but only after we know what we're doing. So I'm teaching you the 5D process as a temporary thing. I do not expect you to use this long term. So for those of you that quickly go like, ugh, this is so, I don't want to use this. He's making a yeah, giant one, but like, it's temporary, okay? This is a temporary process to help us understand how to solve these problems. So you should be looking at this worksheet that you can see I hand wrote name at the top. Put your name there. Put your name there. It's got van, truck, van and truck. So the 5D process is right here. And it's on your new homework that you picked up up here. You good? I mean, you can, like, do you need something? Okay, you got this worksheet? Sweet. The five Ds are describe or draw, define, I'm pointing over at the whiteboard, by the way, for those of you like staring at me, just so you can see where it's at. Do, like try the thing out, see if it works, Decide, did it work? And then declare either we need to change something or we got the answer, right? So here's our first situation. Laura takes really good care of her vehicles, right? She owns a blue van and a red truck. So we got two things, a van and a truck. Although she bought them both new, she's owned the truck for 17 years longer than she's owned the van. If the sum of the ages of the vehicles is 41 years, how old is the van and the truck? Go ahead and chat with your team. What could we write down in terms of like defining a variable? Is a picture appropriate here? Can we write down some expressions like V equals or T equals or like V plus T? So like, write down what you know. Those bullet points on that worksheet are where we're writing this stuff. So those bullet points. Use easier variables. Use like V and T. All right, take a pause real quick. 
because I, I hear what some of you are saying. So look at this. This is on your homework for tonight. You don't have to pull your homework back out, but look up here for a second. If I tell you the base of the rectangle is 13 centimeters longer than the height, I take that information and say, well, I can write out a sentence with that, right? The base is actually the height plus 13, because they said the base is 13 longer than the height. That's the same thing we're going to do with Laura's situation, but you don't have it printed in front of you unless, and you guys might want to do this. Sorry, I should have thought about this, but my brain is in six different places. This is on your paper from yesterday. So if you want somewhere to highlight these things, she has owned the truck for 17 years longer than she's owned the van. So actually, guys, pull out 532, unless you like just turned it in. And I might dig it out and give it back to you. Pull out 532. We need to highlight this stuff and have somewhere to write it. So Lucas, come back up here and grab that. This is also why 532 is not due till tomorrow. Mia, come grab that. Franco. Layla. Sorry, I should have just had you guys keep this, but I'd rather us highlight these things. Yeah, there's a lot of you guys, so just find your paper. Eve. Good work to all of you for having this done and ready to turn in. But we can turn it back in at the end of class. Highlight or underline that on your homework paper. Oh yeah, random cards. Guys, remember, you can always skip with random cards, but I would like you to try if you can. So Layla Davis, can you tell me what we could write down based off what we highlighted in yellow? You're all good. Marina? Or maybe I highlight my other statement. You don't have to do just that one. There's also this statement that we highlighted up on the up on the board. Can you do anything with that one? I mean, you can still pass. That's totally fine. Eli? Either of these statements. The truck is 17 years older, longer, right? Older than the van. So the truck, guys, be careful. These statements are easy to switch around. The truck is older. So the truck is van plus 17. Does that make sense why we wrote that? They said the truck, she's owned it for 17 years longer. Then Katie, what I have highlighted in blue says, if the sum of the ages of the vehicles is 41, what vehicles are we talking about? What two vehicles does she have? A van and a truck. So what else we know is V and T, the sum of their ages, is what? 41. Awesome. So now we can go over to our 5D and use this system. So we could have written those things right here. So we could say V plus T equals 41. We could say T equals V plus. So guys, right here, and I, I would have modified this worksheet, but it's kind of tough to modify the stuff CPM has. For truck, we're going to replace that. So I'm trying to get my focus back. Instead of truck, right above it, below it, somewhere, put V plus 17. And actually, for van, I'm just going to put a little V to remind myself I'm using V for that. So, like yesterday where we said, pick something, try it out, see if it's too high, too low. Anyone want to give me a guess of how old the van might be? I mean, it doesn't matter, Lucas. Uh, 12. 12! So, if the van 
You know, I like 10 because it's a really nice number. So I'm going to try 10 first, but then we'll try 12. So if the van is 10, how old is the truck? 27. 27. Pause here. Everyone should be writing this down. Is anyone confused? I picked 10. I just chose it out of thin air. My vehicle is about 10 years old, so maybe her van's about 10 years old. The truck has to be the van plus 17. Anybody confused here? John? So the do is sum of ages. So when we do the do, do do, we add the ages up and we figure out what they are and then we say, do I need to adjust or did I get it? So are we at 41? No. Are we too high or too low? Too low. Too low. We're too low. So now we adjust higher. I like to change colors. If you got a lot of different colored pens or whatever. So now Lucas had told me try 12. If the van is 12, well, go ahead and try this on your own. If the van is 12, go ahead and finish this out. Try to finish out the rest of this 5D process. If the van is 12, how old is the truck? What would their ages add up to? Did we get what we wanted? This is why teachers say they don't like that. Once we get good at equations, we shouldn't need the 5D. Amanda, if the van is 12, what's the truck when I add 17 to 12? Really, what's 12 plus 17? You're not Amanda. 29, this is not the pen I was using, but whatever. 29. Because 12 plus 17, right? They told us we have to add 17. So now the do, we do the do. What's 12 plus 29? 41 is our, woo, got it. So now we declare, what did we figure out? Lucas, I'll let you take us home. No, I'm sorry, but I know what you're going to say, and that's not what we're practicing today. So for the sake of time, I'm sorry. Like, truly I am. If I have unlimited time, I would love to let you show that, but I don't want to confuse people. I know there's another way. There's a bunch of ways. And the fact that you knew the answer pretty quickly, I know exactly what you're doing. Questions on this. What if we had tried like 20 for the van and we were too high? How would we adjust our guess? Down. Yeah, bring it down, right? So if we're too low, we take our guess up. If we're too high, we take our guess down. Go back to your 532 paper. Look at your next situation and see if you can start building that 5D with your team. When he multiplies his number by 6 and then subtracts 15. So we got to, like, Ryan's just thinking of a number. Ryan. 
we so number if you're whistling I'm curious why you're bored enough to whistle because this is a new skill Uh, Vanessa, do you want to pick a variable for Ryan's number? Notice how you're not Vanessa. Stop what you're doing. Vanessa. Yeah, I don't like that one. I mean, sure, N for number. But like, you could use N, but I would use R, right? Because in this situation, we're talking about Ryan's number. Up to you. But I'm going to make a little note here of like, all right, so R. What then, Layla Graph, would our do be? What do we need to do to, like, test the thing they told us? Yeah, absolutely. You guys can always pass. Hey, Zeus, what do we do? What else did they tell us? It's up here, actually. I haven't written it down yet. Farah, what did they tell us in here about... Yeah, multiply by 6, and then subtract 15. So we would do 6 times R, then minus 15. And then our decide, did we get back to, do we equal the original whatever you called your Ryan's number? I like 10. It's a really nice number. I often start with 10. I have no idea what to like what to guess, so I'm just gonna start with a number and see if I'm too high, too low. So when we write 10 here, the do, and I should see our pencils moving, the do will be six times that number, then minus fifteen. What six times ten? Sixty minus fifteen. 45, ooh. Am I too high, too low? Yeah. Too high this time. So, Antonella, you want to give me another number to try that is not 10? And based off us being too high, I should tell you how to whether we go up or down. Sorry, I can't hear you. What? 8? Sure. Sounds great. Ah, 8. Sounds great. So 6 times 8, what's 6 times 8? 8, 16, 30, 48. 48 minus 15? Thirty-three. So we're still too high. So go down. Right, since we're still too high, go down, and maybe like we're still too high by a lot. Right, we're really far away from getting our original number, Kylie. I would do, three. do three, she says. So six times three. Eighteen minus fifteen. Oh man. Did we get our original number? Got it. So what are we going to declare? I do declare. Sorry, it makes me feel like, um, who's the character with the big hat and the, he's animated. He's got guns. Um, no. Hey, never mind. I'm just too old. Ryan's number is three. That the van was 12 and the truck was 29. And this, I, I forgot to write it here. We get back to the original number. Right? So that was what they actually had told us. Questions on what we're doing right now. This really is playing with the math. It's like when your parents say you don't play with your food. I'm telling you, play with your numbers. Right, see what works, adjust it if it doesn't.
Now, again, like Lucas wanted to tell us, there's another way to do these sort of problems. We'll learn that as we go. Questions on what we just did with the defining, the do-doing, the deciding, the declaring. Um, on your flip to the next page you have in here. I want to give you guys a few minutes to try this on your own. And I may just make this the last one you do. I might just walk around. Take what they tell us, highlight it or underline it, rewrite it down here, and then we'll start our trials. And if you need more than three trials, you always can. Guys, one of the reasons I haven't changed our seating groups is people share stuff, which is great. All right, I know I told you I was going to give you a couple minutes, but I want to reference, like, I want to make sure we're going the same direction. The medium length side is seven longer than the shortest side. The longest side is twice as long as the shortest side. So when we go to describe and or draw, now guys, if you make a drawing, it, it can look like whatever, right? Because it's a scalene triangle. But there needs to be like a medium side and a longer side, so that's a little hard. But what should we use as our first variable? Thank you very much. Isabella, do you have a guess of what we're going to use for our first, or, or what three variables we're going to use? Yeah, that's also really important, the total of 39. So I should have highlighted that, but now I got my pencil in my hand. If I have a short side, a medium side, and a long side, I could use the variables S, M, and L. On your paper, make sure you've got an S, an M, and an L. And then down here at the define, I need you to split that space for the S, the M, and the L. Split this up. Vincent, what would we say about the S? What is it? Uh, Ooh, we're not guessing yet. What is, like, I haven't defined these variables yet. Or I haven't described them yet, I guess. What is S going to represent? Uh, <clears throat> I what, what part of the triangle? Uh, the, short the short side. S is short side. Franco, what could we say about the medium side? Or what did they tell us? is what? Yeah, it's seven longer than the short side. So it's S plus seven. 
What about the longest side? Carmen, can you tell me what we would say about L equals? Yeah, it's twice the short side. So it's S times two or two S. Do not lose this paper. We're starting here tomorrow. This is literally the first question we're diving into. So clip this in your binder. We are starting here tomorrow. I got like five. Do you need straight edges or entire rulers? Uh, this is good. I got rulers. I need tape measures. Uh, they're now in the little storage closet thing.